everyone, and welcome to those who are online as well. This is Lightcast Church International, streaming here from Queens, New York. <laughs> so I am so excited to have each and every one of you with, here to, uh, oh, with us today, this morning. So why don't we do this? Why don't we all stand up and just say hi to those who are right beside you? Or maybe if you haven't really, if you haven't really, if you don't know somebody yet, maybe it's time to introduce yourself to them and know their names. Come on, come on, go around, go around and know the, the, know the names of your neighbor. Come on, know the names of your neighbor. Everybody, you know, I was, uh, I, let me share this to you in Lament, Lamentations chapter 3 verse, let's start with verse 22. It says here, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I am so glad that we have a faithful God. And when everything seems to change, and when everything is so uncertain, we know that we have a God that is certain and that is faithful. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you. Lord, you are our God. You are unchanging. You are faithful. You are ever-present, Lord God. And Lord, your love and your mercies are new every morning. Lord, this morning, I just pray, Lord God, that Lord, we will bask. We will bask in your glory, in your love, in who you are, Lord God. For Lord, it is only then, Lord God, that Lord, we will see who we are. That Lord, we are sinners. But Lord, nonetheless, Lord, you love us. And Lord, whatever worship we can ever give to you, Lord God, we know that it is a privilege, Lord God. Lord God, and we know that it can only come from you. Lord, we... Pray, Lord God, that this day, Lord God, this morning, Lord, we repent, Lord God, of anything that is not from you. Anything that we have felt, we have thought of, we have done, we have said, Lord God. Lord, we, all, every single one of them, Lord, we ask for forgiveness. So that, Lord, everything that we do, Lord God, will be for your glory, Lord God. That everything that we do will be acceptable in your eyes. God, so Lord, we pray, Lord God, that Lord, may you accept our worship this morning. All the praises that we can ever give be unto you and you alone. Lord, we love you, and Lord, we ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. All of this, amen. Amen. Hebrews 10, 19 to 10, 19 to 22 says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that as your children, we have access, Father, to your throne. We thank you, Father, that we can come to your throne room, O oh God, and meet with you, and that we are welcome. We come with gratefulness, Father, and falling on our face in humility. All we can say is that holy, holy, holy are you, God. How lovely, Lord, are your dwelling places. My soul even faints. My soul yearns and my even faints for the courts of the Lord. 
How lovely is your dwelling place. Holy Spirit, take us into the holy place. Holy Spirit, take us into the holy of holies. We want to worship. We want to bless the name. Bless the name of God. Our God who loves us. We exalt you with praise. With the fruit of our lips, giving thanks, oh God. So grateful because you love us so much. For yours, oh Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. Everything in heaven and in earth is yours, Lord. Yours is the kingdom and you are exalted over all. You, God, you are God. Earnestly, I seek you. We seek you today. We set our eyes on you, Father. We fix our eyes on you, Lord. We love to dwell in your courts. Yes, Lord. And we just want to be where you are. We just want to be where you are. Just be still and be quiet before you. To enjoy, Father, your fellowship. To hear your voice, to linger at your presence, to linger before you, Lord. Holy Spirit, take us there to the Holy of Holies. We want to stay there. We want to stay in the presence, in the presence of the one who loves us. We will worship you. We, worship you Lord. we see it before you, Lord. We, worship you, Lord. we love to be in your presence. To gaze at the beauty of your holiness. To gaze at your glory. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus making way for us to come to come before the throne we just want to sit here we want to sit before you we want to sit here I'm caught up in your prayer Jesus. 
Lord, forgive us, Lord, for making it, Father, unholy, Lord, in our lives, Lord. We just want to come back, Lord, that you will be the center of our lives, that you will be enthroned, Lord, in our hearts, and no one else, Father, will survive on the throne of our heart but you. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to the joy of our salvation, the joy of our first love. I'm sorry when I come with my agenda and I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you yes, take us back to our first love of God to our first love that our joy is just Jesus Lord that we bask in your presence that we bask in the joy oh Lord of being with you Lord you shepherding us Lord thank you Father thank you Father for your presence in our lives thank you Holy Spirit that every day Father we know is sweeter than the day before and we are with you because you have called us and you have welcomed us, Father, before your throne. We're not here for blessings, oh God. We're not here for blessings. I'm not here for blessings. Not for blessings, Lord. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. More than anything that you can do, I just want you, I just want you, I just want you, and nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do, nothing else will do. Just you, Lord, just I you. Just want you do. Nothing, nothing else. else. Nothing else. Only you, Nothing Jesus. else will do. We I just, just want you, Lord. Want you. Nothing, nothing else. else. Nothing, nothing else. else. Nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. We're caught up in this holy moment. We never want to leave. You don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just more than anything that you can do. We just want you, Lord, in our lives more than anything. That every moment that we are aware of your presence. And that we see I you working, oh God. Yes, you, more than anything that we can do, Jesus. More than anything that you can do. Say to the Father, I, I just want yes, more than anything that you can do. We want you, Jesus. Say to 
Jesus more than anything that you can do. I just want say to the Holy Spirit, yes, we want to see your power in our lives. More than anything that you can do. I just want you. More than anything that you can do. I just want. presence in our life, oh God. Thank you, Father. We give you our hearts today. No holding back, Lord. Every secret place in our hearts, Father. That in our hearts, Father, only your life, oh God, in our hearts. No other love competes. No rival throne survives, Lord. And we just serve and we just love you, Father. And together we will do this, oh God. We bless you, Father. Be glorified today. Glorified Lord, be lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Father. God. We praise Thank your you, name, Lord. Spirit. We worship Thank you, Lord, Lord God. Thank Lord, you, we may have blessings, Lord God, in this world, Lord, but none can compare, Lord God, to you. Because, Lord God, you are our greatest blessing. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us life. Thank you, Lord God, for salvation. Indeed, Lord God. We offer to you, Lord God, praise us, Lord God, in joy in our hearts, for you are the one, Lord God, who is faithful, and you are the Lord of Lords. Let's give the Lord God a clap offering. All right. We praise you, Lord. Turn it around. Open the windows of heaven. Pour out your blessing over 
Thank you, Lord God, for turning our mourning, Lord God, into dancing. Thank you, Lord God, because you are you and you are our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. So usually I would actually ask everybody to take a seat, but I don't want to dampen your spirit, so <laughs> keep standing up. All right. So for our giving, all right, I, I want to exhort everybody with this verse. It, from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 8, it says here, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly, nor of, of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Wait, but it doesn't end there. And I want everybody to listen to this. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, the giver, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have abundance for every good work. God is always sufficient. He never lacks. He always provides. So I want everybody, give. Give with all, with all, uh, bountiful, right? Give with all your heart. Give as much as you can, even. Because you know what? God, that will not be left unturned. God will enrich your lives in every possible way. So church, I'm not going to withhold any, anybody from giving. Because you know what? I have experienced it myself. God is a wonderful God, and He is worthy of everything that we can ever give. Let's get ready. It will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together and running over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. God, Lord God, Lord, you are the owner and the creator, Lord God, of the whole universe, Lord God. There is nothing, Lord God, that is ever created that is not from you, Lord God. So, Lord, let everything that we give, Lord God, be, let us acknowledge, Lord God, that it is from you, Lord God. And, Lord, whatever we give, Lord God, is just something, Lord God, that is from the abundance, Lord God, that, Lord, you have already given to us, Lord God. It is an overflow, Lord God, in our hearts, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. May all these things, Lord God, that was given this morning, Lord God, be for the furtherance of your gospel, Lord God, for the building up of your body, Lord God, that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, be preached, Lord God, all over the world, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. We love you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Now, uh, so for our scripture reading, I know that if some of you are a little bit, a little bit tired already, uh, you can take a seat, but nonetheless, I believe that we should be prompt in our uh, reading of God's Word. So let us keep standing for those who can still stand. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So we have our verse, our scripture reading for this morning will be coming from the book of John chapter 10. It is starting from verse 1 to verse 11. So here's what we're going to do. All odd numbers, meaning 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 
it will be all ladies, all right? And then all even numbers, it will be all men, all right? Is that clear? All right, so let us, let's start. All ladies, most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Men, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Ladies, to him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Men, and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Ladies, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pastors. Man, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Praise God for his word. Uh, so, this morning, it is always a privilege, right? Uh, baka naman, this is the last Sunday of October, winning uh, Pastor's Appreciation Month. Pero, hindi pa yun mamaya. Pero, here's how we show our appreciation. Let's give our senior pastor a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. church is the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. We talk about that it is the household of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the body of Christ last week and today we are going to talk about the flock. Right? So say, say it with me, the flock. There you go. Right? So flock or sheepfold. That's the way it is expressed in, in the scriptures. Right? And uh, I, I'm almost uh, tempted to actually um, go with a, a more, an, what you call that, a more intriguing title but I paused myself doing that. So we just simply put it, the flock, all right? So, um, and um, for those who, who know me, you already know what is in my mind. Okay, so here, the first thing is, there's a misunderstanding of what church should be, right? Right, there's a misunderstanding of what church should be. So, um, so one of those is that the church is the building. The church is the building, no. This is called a, a chapel, Right? A small one is a chapel or a regular size one. That's a chapel. That's a church building. The big ones, we call them cathedrals. But this is not the church. This is the building where the church meets. Because the church are the people. And here's another thing about church that we misunderstand. The church is about attendance. No. We tackled that last week. If it's only attendance that is the aim of Christianity, I don't want this anymore because there's a lot of things that I attend to, right? And if we are treating church and church attendance this way, it is as if we are watching a movie and um, Black Adam just came out, right? And we are anticipating, you know, um, what's the other one? Wakanda Forever, right? And we are also um, looking for Kapag Tumibok Ang Puso Part 5, you know, but I, I'm actually looking forward, but the, I'm looking forward for the chosen 
is going to be shown, the first two episodes is going to be shown in movie theaters. Support that. That's a really a great, uh, whatever you are hearing, a lot of those are not true, right? Um, the, the Chosen is a very great series, right? Of course, there's a lot of cinematic license to it, but watch it, right? So it's going to be, so these are like, you know, things that, so if church is just like that, you go in, you watch, you listen, and some of you during the time of singing, you're, 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 you're not really, there are some of you that I'm really wondering, do you enjoy Worship, because during the time of singing, you're like this. And you could see like Rika is like rocking, the, rocking everything, you know, and Sister Wang also. And then, and there's the way you look. Oh, windows of heaven, overflow. Yeah. <laughs> right? and, then, and it's not just like attending and then listening to the sermon and, uh, you know, grading the pastor or the speaker. Oh, yeah, I, I like those points of, the, of, of Pastor Ronald. And, oh, uh, Pastor Ronald is just, you know, the things that he was saying, I don't agree with it. That's not the point, right? That's not the point. You are not here. You're not here to be entertained. You're not here just to be, just to listen, and then you go, you go out, and that's it. That's not Christianity. That's not the church, right? If that's still your treatment of what Christianity is, you are not growing. There's something wrong with your spiritual life. Right? So here on Sundays, again, we have pointed it out last week, right? If you're not here last week, go, it's online, listen to that sermon. Because it is not just about attendance, it's about cooperating, and it's about, you know, um, cooperating in contributing. God has given you gifts. And that's why um, we are glad last week during training, and you know, it's like a, maybe around 75% of you actually stayed, more, even more than 75. Why? Because these people... These people are ready to serve. You see the ushers downstairs? Huh? Meron pa tayong aso. Downstairs, the ush, one of our ushers is a dog, you know? Right? Have you seen Leon and have you seen um, Jonathan? Right? Jonathan um, opening, the, opening the door, right? And even if the, the car is not actually attending the church, they're still opening it, you know? Right? And all that. And actually somebody, uh, in the ushers upstairs... And I actually uh, told Nani Susan to, to go in already and, uh, because I wonder, she, she really loves to, to sing in, in worship. So I told her, Nani, she, she was there. I see her and she was like already worshiping. So I told her to come in. So I enjoyed worship there. So, you know, and then somebody, you know, got lost. There's actually um, going to the third floor, to the medical um, floor, right? And he came in and he cannot speak English. So we were in sign language. Right? And then uh, finally he figured out that this is a church. Right? So, but this, again, is not the church. This is a church because the church is here. All right? Do you get it? And um, I remember, I remember that um, a long time ago I heard this story. So can I tell you this story? Can I read it to you? The story is told of a lady. This is a misunderstanding of what church is too who was rather old-fashioned, always quite delicate and elegant, especially in her language. She and her husband were planning to a week's vacation in Florida. So she wrote to a particular campground asking for a reservation. She wanted to make sure the campground was fully equipped, but didn't quite know how to ask about the toilet facilities. Right? She just couldn't bring herself to write the word toilet. Right? And in her letter, after much deliberation, she finally came up with the old-fashioned term, bathroom commode. Yeah, that's, a, that's the old term, if you don't know that, right? Bathroom commode. But when she wrote that, that's actually literal. That's the, the toilet bowl, right? Um, now we call it uh, in Tagalog, inidoro, right? All right? But when she wrote that down, she, she thought she was being too forward. And so she started all over again and rewrote the entire letter referring to the bathroom commode merely as the BC. BC. So does the campground, she asked, have its own BC? Is what she actually wrote. Well, the campground owner wasn't old-fashioned at all. And when he got the letter, he just couldn't figure out what the woman was talking about, that busy business really stopped him. So he asked around what it means and he couldn't. After worrying about it for a while, he showed the letter to several campers, but they couldn't imagine what the lady meant either. 
So the campground owner finally coming to the conclusion that the lady must be asking about the local Baptist church. Right? Sat down and wrote the following reply. Dear madam, I regret very much. That this is John Mar's new role. To make sure that I look good. Yeah. Right. Actually, you can make me look good just by standing here. <laughs> and so he wrote, Dear Madam, I regret very much the delay in answering your letter, but I now take the pleasure in informing you that, again, a BC is located nine miles north of the campground and is capable of seating 250 people at a time. I admit it is quite a distance away if you are in the habit of going regularly, but no doubt you will be pleased to know, to know that a great number of people take their lunches along and make a day of it. They usually arrive early and stay late. It is such a beautiful facility and the acoustics are marvelous. Even the normal delivery sounds can be heard. The last time my wife and I went was six years ago. And it was so crowded, we had to stand up the whole time while we were there. It may interest you to know that right now, a supper is planned to raise money to buy more seats. They are going to hold it in the basement of the BC. Right? I would like to say it pains me very much not to be able to go more regularly. But it surely is no lack of desire on my part. As we grow old, it seems to be more of an effort, particularly in cold weather. If you decide to come down to our campground, perhaps I could go with you the first time you go, sit with you, and intro introduce you to all the other folks. Remember, this is a friendly community. Sincerely, campground owner, right? Can you imagine that that is actually, you know, that you are actually in that part? If you were the, the, the old lady, what would you think? And here's actually one of the things, right? When you mention church, to those who are outside the church, they might be thinking of a different thing. They are asking something that the church does not answer. And let me tell you this. If you are here and you are looking to know, to grow, and to show the Lord Jesus Christ, you are in the right place. But if you are here just to attend, if you are here just to observe, or that, that's fine. But if you are here just to attend, you know, just to have a mark on your attendance, this is not the right place for you because eventually you're going to actually see that we are not what you might have known as church. In this church, we take God, we take Jesus Christ seriously. And if you want to do that, you are most welcome. Amen? And those who agree with that, say amen. amen. Right? And those who don't agree, I still treat you to lunch. <laughs> But here's the thing, right? So we are here to help each and everyone to come closer to the Lord Jesus Christ and to fulfill your God-given potential, right? So now the church was given by the Lord God for that reason. And now we, we see in John chapter 10, John chapter 10. So the, we are going to see there the Lord Jesus Christ said in verse Verse 1, most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So we're going to see there that the Lord Jesus Christ is talking about the sheepfold. And here's the first one, the first point for today. The good shepherd owns the flock, right? And then let's jump to verse 9 and look at what the, what the Lord Jesus Christ says in verse 9. He says in verse 9, he says there, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. We are going to discuss that more in a little bit. So the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the door. The Lord Jesus Christ is the door. But then at the same time, he is also the shepherd. So the Lord Jesus Christ is saying that the flock, the sheepfold belongs to me. And you cannot get in but by but through the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It is consistent when he said in John 14, 6, we are familiar with that. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. What's the meaning of that? A lot of people are saying today, and even Christians are actually saying this, that they are saying that there's a lot of roads leading to God. Right? No. There's only one. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? I didn't say that. I'm not teaching that, that just because that's what I want. Because if, if the, the, like, you know, the polite me will never say that. Because it's actually, you're thinking of like, the way it arrives, it's like, it's so exclusive. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, no one can come to God but through me. But here's my thing. Every road leads to Jesus. Right? And the Lord Jesus Christ brings you to the Father. And so the Lord Jesus Christ said, the flock belongs to him. The church belongs to him. And not only that, in verse 3, look at what the Lord God says. Right? The Lord God says in verse 3, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Right? So he said, he calls them by name. And not only that, the sheep hears his voice. Do you know that even if you know the call sign of the, the shepherd's app, actually they have their own all call signs, right? Well, with my kids, some of you already know that. I whistle and they know it's me, right? They know the, the whistle of their, of their father in, in, that, in that sense, you know? How many of you actually experienced that in the Philippines, right? That uh, uh, your, your mom has something, you know? They, uh, they have this call sign, you know, it's your mom. But here's actually one thing. Right? The sheep, how will they know? Do you know that the sheep, even if you copy the call sign, they are not going to follow you? Right? They listen to the voice of their shepherd. And here's a clip I want to show you because they, were, they experimented on this and showed this. And uh, it's good that they, I found this on the internet. So let's watch this clip. <laughs> One more time. shepherd's going like tika, 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 tika. and so the other people tried to do it right and they started doing and copying the call sign of the shepherd but the sheep you're not they're not moving at all but when the shepherd starting doing that you see the heads of the sheep right and but of course they want to make sure it's their shepherd and after a while everybody started coming why thanks like you know three to four people tried to do it with them it didn't work. But as soon as the shepherd speaks, why? Because if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will know his voice. Right? And the Lord God says, you hear his voice. Right? So how do we hear his voice? And here it is. The Bible says today, you know, there, we know that there's like, you know, God speaks to your heart. God speaks to our spirit. But that is actually a dangerous way to weigh things. Because there's a lot of times, somebody actually told me when I was younger, Pastor Ronald, 
He said, I, the Lord, I believe the Lord God told me that you're going to be my husband. A lot of times I've already heard that, right? And the problem is some of them are guys. No, I'm messing up with that. But here's, it's, it's, but you know, it, somebody actually, not only one, not only, and actually we have a story in our Bible school. You know, and one of our classmates told one of the, one of our classmates and told her, and you know what came out in my quiet time? The Lord told me that you're going to be married to me. Knox. Right? And then you know what my, my lady classmate, you know how she replied? She said, we have a different Lord. <laughs> right? So, you know, she looked for a different God. You know, so that, that's, not the, that's not the way of impression. We believe that God speaks. Right? He can speak to your heart. But that's really a wrong way of weighing things. How does the Lord God speak to us? Right? Again, the Lord God says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Right? The word of God is alive and powerful. Right? It, it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Right? And dividing and piercing to dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. The meaning of that, that's the deepest part of you. So the Lord God says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. All right? So... By this, you become familiar to the voice of the Lord, right? So you need to spend time in God's word. The next one is the Lord God says that the Lord God calls you by name. And last but not the least, right, the third thing here that he owns us in verse 10, look at what the Lord Jesus Christ said. The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I have come that you may have life and life more Abundantly. Then in verse 11, look at what the Lord God said in verse 11. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. There is no other religious leader, even a religious founder, who said that he is the savior of the world. Nobody died for you. Nobody died, right, in order for, to, so the Lord Jesus Christ did not come. To die on the cross of Calvary, to establish a religion, he came here to establish a relationship with you and me. Clear? Right? It's not just about being religious. It's about a relationship. That's what the Lord God is saying. So in verse 11, he said, the good shepherd gave his life for the sheep. All right? Now, the second one, the good shepherd also. So the first one, the good shepherd owns the flock. The next one is the good shepherd leads the flock, right? Now, in verse 3, look at the latter part of that verse in verse 3. It says, it says there, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And leads them out. We're, we're going to see that a little bit more later. And then in verse 4, it says, and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. He goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. So this, again, we might be thinking that this is actually, this is the coral, right? This is like, you know, the sheepfold or whatever we might call it, right? But we were not meant by the Lord God to just stay here. He wants us to actually go out there, right? So the Lord God says, but as we go out there, we listen. We follow the Savior. We follow our leader, the Lord Jesus Christ. We follow the shepherd and look at what, how do we do that, right? We listen. It doesn't change. We listen to his voice. I don't want to go anywhere where God is not there, right? Right now, there's a lot of good causes that you can actually like, pursue. There's a lot of good causes that you're going to see that the world is actually promoting. Even Christians are doing that. And uh, one, of my, one of my heartbreaks is because um, there was this one time where I, I, was, I was glad that one of our young adults started um, getting closer with this group of Christians, supposedly. And they were doing recreation. They were doing, uh, uh, they were doing good causes and all that. But then after a while, I learned that most of these people are not dedicated to their own churches. Right? So they started a fellowship out of their own churches. And then, you know, some of their activities, recreation. I, how I hope that it is ministry that they are doing this. But they did a fun run on a Sunday. I'm not saying that you cannot run on Sundays. But what I'm saying is that by doing that, everyone who had participated there are not in their own local churches. Are you getting me? Right? Make sense? 
right? Is it bad to actually, you know, from time to time to do this? There's nothing wrong with that. But my problem there is that you are being, right, your time is being stolen, right, in order to do these good causes. So you better remember, and that's also when I was younger, I'm so aggressive. A lot of things that I've done in the ministry, it is not God's idea. It is the, it's not the Lord Jesus Christ's idea. It's the Lord Ronald Ramirez's idea. And a lot of things had failed. I'm not saying that if you follow the Lord God, that you're not going to fail. No, the point there is, there are times that we get ahead of God. It's a good idea. Then you go to the Lord God. Lord God, this is a great, really a great idea. Right? Really a great idea. And please bless this. Wrong. You listen to the voice of the Savior. You listen to the voice of the shepherd and follow what he's doing. Do you know that even the Lord Jesus Christ did that while he was here? He said, I don't do anything on my own. I do what the Father tells me to do. I watch what the Father is doing and I join him. Right? So the same with us. We follow the Savior. We watch what he's doing. We listen to his voice and follow him. Amen? Right? And, and, and here, the next one is, the Lord God says, and how, do, how does he do that? Now, let's go. In Psalm 23, right? Psalm 23, you know, um, the, the sad thing about Psalm 23, this is always being read during, during what? Funerals, right? But this is not just about funeral. This is a really a great, a, great, uh, um, a great chapter in the Bible. This is talking about your life following the Lord Jesus Christ. So listen, in Psalm 23, you know, so these are the promises of God. In verse 1 and 2, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not one, it means that you are not going to lack anything, right? Then he says in verse 2, right, he leadeth me in the, um, he maketh me lie down in green pastures and he leadeth me in the path, oh, sorry, he leadeth me in still waters, right? So that means, number one, it's provision, right? The Lord God provides for you. Number, number two, he says that, you know, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. What's the meaning of that? The Lord God is telling you that he's going to provide direction for you. Direction for you, right? And I know people who are like me that we are assertive and we, we, we are actually uh, um, somehow, you know, self-directed. When you go to the Lord God, when you follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you learn to, that you need to depend on God more. Um, some, some of you are actually like you are, we are glad that, you know, that there's the declaration of independence. I'm an independent man and I'm an independent woman, all right? And there are times that you don't know what you are. Right, But here, the Lord God is telling us that the more you grow in the Lord God, it's the declaration of dependence. The more you grow in your spiritual life, the more you depend on God. Right, The more you humble yourself and depend on God. And the Lord God will provide you the proper direction. Amen? And some of you, some of you actually, you are here in like us and you are thinking this is the idea of your friend. No, this is the idea of God. You are thinking that this is your idea that you are here now. No, this is the idea of God. Right? And as you follow him, the Lord God promises you, right, that you are going to see great and mighty things that which you do not know of yet. Right? Next one, in verse 4, he says, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Every day we, we face evil. Right? Every day we face mishaps. And New York, is not really a, New York City is not really a great place to live in right now. Right? Every day we hear somebody being pushed to the platform. Right? Um, I mean, I'm from the flat platform, you know, and uh, there are crimes that are happening. Stabbing is like really, really um, in the increase. But I tell you, we have a, uh, um, for women, we have a free first class, right? The first class is free, right? There's a, uh, a self-defense class every Thursday, which is being led by, by our sister Rebecca. She's a third Dan Taekwondo black belter. All right, so, uh, so attend that. The first class is free. Try it because you need it. This is not, this is not sports taekwondo that, we, that she's teaching. This is really like practical street self-defense. Right, so what's that? Bring a gun. <laughs> right, so the Lord God says, yeah, the way want to the value of the shadow of death. We are going to face evil, but the Lord God says that I will be with you. So that's protection. And then he says, the, your, your, rod, um, um, the, your rod and your... Your staff, they comfort me. I was sorry. Yet though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So that's God's presence. And then it says, you, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
right? That's consolation, the comfort of God. And last but not the least, that's correction too. The staff, remember? So when somebody goes wayward, the, the, the shepherd will draw you with that. That's why it's, it's, um, it's a shape like that. So he, he nudges you, but if you don't, of course, it's also being used as a, and as, as a weapon against, you know, against other animals, against thieves. And they also have the rod. But do you know the rod is not just for hitting something? The rod actually is used that if the sheep keeps on going away, that's, the, that's what we meant with black sheep. The black sheep is not the black, the uh, colored sheep. The meaning of that is the black sheep is the one who goes away always. Right? Sa inyong mga anak yan, sino yan? Right? It's always going wayward. All right? And you know what happens? And because of that, if he doesn't correct his way, because others are also going to follow that, you know what the, the shepherd does? He breaks one of the legs. Right? He breaks one of the legs, but then carries him all throughout. And that's amazing, you know? And until he heals. Right? For you, uh, let, me, let me be direct. Some of you came to the Lord, not when things were happy. Mm. How many of you sought the Lord because you had problems? Come on, raise your hand. Come on, come on. Right? Right? Yeah. And, and, and it's true. It's true. And those actually are our pains. That thank the Lord God because God doesn't waste our pains. Right? He uses that in order for us to come closer to him. So here, the, Lord, the shepherd leads, the shepherd feeds, and the shepherd meets the needs. Right? So that's all encapsulated there. Now the third point and the last point for today, the good shepherd entrusts the flock. What do I mean by that? Remember the Lord Jesus Christ, he's, of course, he's omnipresent. But remember, he said to the apostles, it is more beneficial for me to actually leave you. Why? Because when I leave, then the Holy Spirit can come. Our comforter, our encourager. The Holy Spirit is not just a force. He is also a person. Right? We believe that there's one God, but in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit was given to us. Right? So the Holy Spirit indwells you and I. If you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit dwells inside your heart. Right? So that, that's the thing there. But then the Lord God warned us about verse 1. Look at what the Lord God says. There are thieves. Right? And then look at verse 10. The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. Listen here. The thief has a name. Uh, don't look at the person sitting beside you, huh? right? That's not him, right? The thief, his name in the scriptures is Satan. And you know what is his purpose? He only has two things that he wants to do. He deceives. The, the thief, the Bible says, the Bible says that this thief is a liar and a murderer. Right? And we are thinking just like the thief, the regular somebody who's just like stealing things. No. This thief is out for a massacre. Right? He's not just satisfied with us stealing from you. And how many of you right, came from that? And my go-to before was religion. My go-to is achievements. And I thought I'm doing good because I'm great at this. But you know, inside my heart, I know there was something wrong because I was a hypocrite. Right? My teachers liked me. Right? But then I remember first year high school. I was performing great in school. I was actually, um, you can't dethrone the valedictorian, the elementary valedictorian and the, and the salutatorian. I came in in that school. That was like my first year, in first year high school. So I came in that year. And I actually, there was like a, um, an, a whole um, department, like the whole first year. We had a, an exam in order to put us, like, because the, the class grew. So they're going to divide us into three sections. And I remember I got number two on the, that exam. And uh, my teachers were blown away. And so I was like really performing all the quizzes, you know, the spelling bees and all that. No, not the spelling bee. But all the, the, the science bee and all that. I joined them. I would always finish number one or number two. And that's why during um, the recognition, I had lots of medals during first year. But here's the thing. One day I was in the guidance counselor's office. And then the guidance counselor told me, 
Ramirez, I thought you're a good kid. You know why? Because I got caught, right, fighting. Right? Fighting at the back of the school. And it's not only once that I got caught. I got caught three times. Right? And during the time. And what's the point there? And even though that I was like doing all these things religiously, I know that there's something wrong with my relationship with God. And I praise the Lord God. I received the Lord Jesus Christ when I was 12. And I finally dedicated my life to the Lord and told him, Lord, if you're going to call me to full-time ministry, I will say yes. That was 15 years old. And praise the Lord God. That the Lord God allowed me to be the pastor of Lightcast. And there are things that our church is, that we are doing now. That, you know, in, in, in my wildest dreams, I couldn't even imagine that we are able to do this. You know, what's the reason? It is because we listen to the voice of the shepherd. But here's the thing. Satan is always out there. Number one is aim. Is that you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. He will make you. Right? He will entice you with good things, with great things. He will actually discourage you with problems. All right? well, there's somebody who actually went to church and invited us to start a Bible study. And then she told, she told me, Pastor, I'm always afraid because every time that we get closer to God, we get a big problem. And true enough, that week, that week, you know, a, uh, we, we, we learned all of a sudden she ghosted us, the family ghosted us, and we learned Right through the grapevine that they actually had their, their, uh, they, there's a lawsuit in the Philippines. Right? That their name was, was involved. Right? And you were like imagining, I couldn't like, and I was asking Lord, why weren't they protected and all that, all that stuff. Satan is out and he doesn't want you to know the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the first thing. Right? The second thing. If you already know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you received the Lord as your Lord and Savior, you know what's his next thing? He doesn't want you to grow. Uh, it's going like to say, oh, okay, man. You, uh, you know, you go to church and you sit down and go home. That's fine. At least you are giving your tithes. Right? And remember, other, other people from the church, they don't even give their tithes. At least you attend, you attend once in two months. Right? You know, some of, the, some of your friends actually attend Christmas and Easter. You know why Christmas and Easter? There's food. Right? But that's why in like us, we have food every Sunday now, right, during training season. That's what I mean, right? But here's the thing. The reason there is because Satan, the thief, comes to steal. And he had already stolen from you, right? He steals, actually, relationships. He breaks them down, right? Your job, your career. And how many of you that you had already tried a lot of things and you had worked so hard, but here's the problem. And it seems like you're still paying, you're still like a, you're still, um, what do you call that? You're still living paycheck to paycheck. Don't raise your hand. Right? And some of you are really trying hard in order to make your family intact. But it seems the more you are doing it, you know, things go into shambles. Right? That's Satan. And he's not just out to steal from you. He wants to Kill everything you've got. And when we say it's not only physical, emotional, intellectual. Right? Today, you cannot discuss with a friend about anything. Everybody's just like mad. Right? Talk about politics, religion, and all the other stuff. You go on online, on Facebook, on Twitter, and even Instagram, people insult one another. Right? Right? Because Satan is out to kill. And not only to kill, but to destroy. And he's not just out to kill you. He's out to kill even your generations. Hmm. But praise the Lord God. Because the Lord God that promised for those who actually worship the Lord God. He says that I'm going to visit your kindness up to 10th generation. It's about your children and their 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 children. Are you getting this? This is not just about you. This is about your future generations. And I praise the Lord God. I praise the Lord God because I know as I entrust my kids Future to them, it's not only my kids' future, but even their kids and kids and kids and kids. Are you following this? Because my God is faithful. 
right? The thief has nothing, got nothing on him. And look at in verse 12. The Lord God also is telling us that there are hirelings. What are hirelings? They are like they are hired in order to look after the sheep. These are not real shepherds. And look, when the, the wolf comes, who runs first? Hirelings. And I tell you, I am not a hireling. Mm. Right? Because this church gone through a lot and I didn't run. I tried. I planned. But the Lord God told me, no. Right, Ronald? I want you to embrace New York. I want you to embrace that I called you to pastor in New York. That was 2017 when I finally told the Lord God, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I know, Lord, I'm already getting tired of being with Dennis and Jonathan. <laughs> right? But as I turned around, right, these two, right, also turned around in the way that they lead. And now we have 24 leaders in our church. Come on, church. Right? <laughs> These are the 24 top leaders. But we are developing in Lycas everyone who will be staying with us. Right? Everyone, every believer will be a leader. Because God wants to use your life to create an impact on other people's lives. Tell you, it doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter how you look. Hmm. Oh, look at the person beside you. See? Tell them. All right? But here's what the Lord God said. The Lord God entrusts us in, in John 21. Let's open in John chapter 21. This is the last conversation of the Lord Jesus Christ and Peter. Yeah? This is like the last time that the Lord Jesus Christ showed himself. And what did he do? That's why the Lord Jesus Christ, he's not a ghost. Because during this time, he prepared breakfast and ate with them. They were by the seashore. Remember, when, where did Jesus call the apostles? Right? By the seashore. Remember? Right? And now, he's talking to them by the seashore. And here, the Lord Jesus Christ he had eaten breakfast. And then in verse 15, John 21, verse 15, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than this? I want that to sink in for you leaders. Do you love me more than this? Right? What if the world looks down on you? What if you lose everything that you value? What if people will actually turn their backs on you, people that you had taken care of? What if in the people that you are serving now, there's a Judas? So all this. The Lord Jesus Christ said, do you love me more than this? What if they don't, people, you know, don't really appreciate you? What if you are not being recognized with the things that you are doing? Do you love me more than this? What if doing the ministry, you're going to get sick? You're going to get tired. You're going to spend. Do you love me more than this? That's what they asked Peter. And Peter confidently answered. And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Right? And look at how the Lord God answered Peter. Lord Jesus Christ, he said to him, feed my lambs. Then after a while, he said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter actually again answered him. This time, he might be wondering already, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He knows that this is not just a facetious question. This is not just something that is random. That the Lord Jesus Christ was just trying to assure Peter's affection on him. He, Jesus was getting deeper. Right? The two actually, the love there because we only have one word for love. So the first one was actually, you know, the first one was actually talking about his affection, his personal affection for the Lord Jesus Christ. But the last one that he, so the Lord Jesus Christ answered him, tend my sheep. Take care of my sheep. But the last question was a general affection or love. The term that was used here. Right? He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? That's not talking about really having that close relationship anymore. 
right? And look at the response of Peter. He was grieved. How about you? How about you? If the Lord God is going to ask you today, do you love me? Are you willing to lose all this? Do you love me more than this? And then the Lord God said, the Lord Jesus Christ said to him, feed my sheep. What's the point? Right? The Lord God entrusts his sheep to shepherds. Right? In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 it says, And God gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, and shepherds and teachers. So God gave the church under shepherds. I am an under shepherd. Right? I am an under shepherd. So in like as I might be the lead under shepherd, but all of you are called by God to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the, I was a sheep. You know, and until now, I'm a sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ. But now I got promoted to become an under-shepherd. Right? And now some of you are also under-shepherds. So I'm now an under-shepherds of under-shepherds. Right? Are you getting the, the, the picture? So we are here. Again, leadership in church is not about bossing people around. It's about serving one another in order to push one another toward the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that that is the desire of your heart. But I don't know anything, Pastor, you know, later. I'll explain it more to you. And then in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Look at what the Lord God says in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart. The Lord Jesus Christ did not just leave. He gave, he gave, the, he gave, the, he gave the Holy Spirit to us. Right? He's, when he left, it ushered the Holy Spirit to us and the Holy Spirit is now within us and gives us power. Remember? And now the Lord God is saying that he also provided these shepherds, these under shepherds, right? So, um, and, and, and look at what he says there, right? And I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So my role with you is not just to pray for you and all that so that you can call me in the middle of the night, Pastor, right? Um, you know, our car broke and you come here and uh, give me a uh, can you boost my, my, my battery and all that? I would love to do that, but that's not only the point. It's not only just to give you a neat piece of preaching, but my role in your life is to equip you, to edify you, to establish you, so that you can enjoy your Christian life. Right? But I need something from you. You need to show up. You need to turn up. And when you are here, I pray that you are also going to turn it up. The meaning of that is that when you do things, do it from your heart. Not as unto man, but as unto the Lord. Are we in agreement with this? Right? And you know, some of you, you know that I am, and some of you would be uh, with me. You know I'm passionate. Right? I really pursue things. And, and I, I dream a lot. But you know, um, before, it is just because of what I see, because this is what I want to become. But today, praise the Lord God, because I am a changed pastor. I used to be a preacher and a teacher, but today I am a pastor. Right? It bothers me when you are not growing. But of course, I can attend to you if you're not going to show up. If you're not going to follow. Are you, are you, are you seeing this? And look at what the Lord God says in verse 10. Again, in John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But listen, the Lord God said, but I have come that you may have life and you might have it more abundantly to the fullest. Right? And here's what I'm understanding today. That even, you know, in my relationship and your, your leadership relationship with you, right, some of you actually have a hard time, have a hard time with, the, again, with your finances. There are times with your relationship with your spouse. There are times that with, the, with your relationship with your kids. There are times with your jobs. And the shepherd's role is to guide you. Because there are a lot of things, your principles in life does not match, your principles in life do not match what are the principles in the scriptures. So my role and the role of also of your shepherds, your cell leaders, is in order to help you understand that. And there are times tell you, right? I praise the Lord God for this because I'm just realizing this. There are times that the things that I tell you, it's not coming from me anymore. 
right? Because there are times that I wondered how I got it right. It is because I took shepherding for real, right? And some of you actually will tell me afterwards, Pastor, thank you. Because what you told me, I applied it. And I was like thinking, where did I learn that from? And I also see that because I myself had to submit myself. You know, we don't have, in, in Baptist system, we don't have hierarchies. No, there's nobody above us. You know, but then I submitted myself to mentors. And it's amazing that there are things that they're telling me. And I'm amazed. And I was like thinking, how did they think of that? How did they know? It is because the Lord God is using them. Giving them the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding. And here's the key. You want to be wise? Pray that the Lord God will make you grow so much that eventually you are going to be an under-shepherd too. Because when you become an under-shepherd, everything, you are able to apply it. Don't rush the process. Do it. So here in Lycas, how do we do that? You might be asking me. Right? So we are now in conclusion. <laughs> All right? So here in Lycas, there are four things that we actually challenge you to actually be faithful to. So number one, letter C, say it with me, cell group. Letter A, appointment with God daily, right? Letter S, Sunday celebration, right? Letter T, training. Today, our life class is going to have a party, right? We have training seasons in Like Us because we want you to learn the scriptures and when we're learning the scriptures, applying the principles for that. So these are life class. So today, if you are interested about that, stay, right? After lunch, we're going to have our life class party. I know some of you actually told me, Pastor, we can't join the, the life class party, yeah? Because there's another party. Okay, yeah? just, just go, all right? All right? But for those who are, again, for those who have delegates, right? To bring them to our life class party today, that's the orientation. And for you to actually know what's going to happen by here. Because life class, it will teach you, you will learn how to live your life for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you haven't gone to life class yet, please, please enroll. If you can't make it today, next week is the first class, right? This is a 10-week series. Right, 10 weeks classes, every afternoon, you are only allowed to be absent twice. Right? You can be absent three times, but you have to pay me. <laughs> right? To allow you. All right? So here, we have training. And eventually, there's the, the school of leaders. And eventually, we have the, the school for missions, that's the church planters. And then we have a school for, for pastors, for leaders of the church. Right? So we, we are glad that these things are actually falling into places. And by... Again, um, by fall, right, we are, Lightcast is going to host, we are going to become the Global Life University New York campus. And I'm excited about that. Come on, church. Yep. So, <laughs> say it with me, training. training. One more time, training. <laughs> All right, training. Training is our happy hour. All right. Pastor, ang busy naman ng Lightcast. Sunday, Pastor, that's my only time to buy groceries. Pastor, Sunday is the only time that I can actually, I, I actually can, uh, can, can, uh, can, can wash our clothes, right? Right? Actually, I don't really believe that, right? For you need to overcome. A lot of us here in Lycas actually quit their, their jobs because they cannot go off on Sundays. And tell you, I want you to hear their testimonies because they were blessed by the Lord God when they did that. Right, Lani? <laughs> yeah. And look, Lani now and Leon is being used by the Lord God. Uh, by the way, ano nga pala? Okay, mo wala during the anniversary. Right? Because I'm going to get a sword and then knight you on that Sunday. Right? Lani and Leon is our, actually, our new addition to our primary leadership. Yep. So before they are my consumption, now they are going to be commissioned. All right, praise the Lord God for that. Now, let's let's bring this home. The flock belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, but the question is, do you belong to Christ? So how do I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ? Right? I want us to actually read this verse in 1 in Peter 
1, 18 to 19. The Lord Jesus Christ did not own you out from nothing at all. Not from a vacuum. He is not just lip service. He's not just, oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. This is not the, the what you call this, uh, the roman romantic or romanticized religion. Right? Here's what the Lord Jesus Christ had done. Knowing, look at what it says. Can you read this with me together? Ready, begin. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold from your aimless conduct, Received by tradition from your fathers. Hold on, for it, hold on to it for a while. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? It's not gold. Not silver that paid for you. Next verse. Right? Verse 19. Look, let's read this together. But with the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Listen, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling you. I love you. I gave my life for you. I died for you so that you might live. And not only live in heaven when you die, but this is promise. Let's go back to John 10 and look at what it says. I have come that you may have life. That's eternal life. That's the Zoe life. But then look at the next part. Look at what it says. Right? I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. To have a meaningful, purposeful life while you are here, still here on earth. And Psalm 23, 6, and I quote, right? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Right? Mercy, it is because I still fail. Right? Goodness, it is God's grace in my life. And then he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all, all the days of my life. And then the cleanser. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Eternal life does not start when you die. Eternal life starts when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. So you might be wondering right now, so, Pastor, how do I receive the Lord Jesus Christ? Simple. Number one, the one that separated you from God is sin. You have to admit that you had sinned against God. Right? Nobody here is not a sinner. Anybody here was perfect? Come on, raise your hand. You see, it's only me. Mm. Right? But, you know, I also made mistakes in my life. Even as I'm following the Lord Jesus, I still do. But praise the Lord God because it's not dependent on that. Because the next thing is the more important thing. He said that you repent of your sins, recognize that you would sin against God. But then he says, receive the gift of eternal life. By taking Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You might have a need right now. Your family matters. Your financial matters. Right, your work, your job, your relationship with others. No matter what it is. But do you know, that is not the most important need that you have. The most important need that you have. All these problems were caused by sin. And sin brings death. You know what the Lord God is telling you right now? Right? That He came to save you from your sin. From a miserable life. And this is a promise when you surrender your life to Him, when you allow Him to come into your heart. Right? Right now, you might be saying, Pastor, you know, um, you're, you're speaking sense to me right now. It's not me. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, who's knocking at the door. That's what He says. If any, I, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Is there anyone here that you are, you feel that the Lord God is speaking to you right now? And listen to what He says. If any man hears my voice and opens the door I will come into him and he will dine with me and I with him the meaning of that is that you're going to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ a personal one so if that's the desire of your heart right now right I'm going to pray right and you can follow me in prayer if you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ 
right? And for those who have already received the Lord Jesus Christ, I also challenge you, don't waste your life, right? Just by being in the seams. Just by being content with the bare minimum. Come on, God has greater things for you and for me. Don't be afraid when you dedicate your life to the Lord God and do what He does, what He wants you to do. Because tell you, right, Christian life is a journey. It's not a guilt trip. Right? God is setting you out for the greatest adventure that you could ever have. But He demands that you follow Him. Listen to His voice. Let's all bow down in prayer. Lord God, I come to you. And I ask you again, Lord God, for again, Lord God, for each and every one. I pray, Lord God, that you're going there to continue, Lord God, to do your wonderful work, Lord God, in our hearts. Oh, I praise you, Lord, and I lift you up. Thank you, Lord God, that you are our good shepherd who laid your life for us. And now, Lord God, that your promise is that, Lord God, when, when we follow you, when we give ourselves to you, you promise us, Lord God, that you would come to give us eternal life and life to the fullest. So, Lord God, right now, you might be talking, Lord God, to somebody who wants to surrender his life to you. Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus Christ's name. If that's the desire of your heart, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you might have done it before, but you want to be assured that today you're surrendering your life to the Lord. If that's the prayer of your heart, I want to pray for you. Right? As all heads are bowed and as all eyes are closed, if that's you, I want to pray for you. Pastor, I want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ today. Can you help me? Can you guide me? Right? If that's the prayer of your heart, I want to pray for you. If you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, nobody looking around, everybody's eyes are closed and heads are bowed. Right? If that's the desire of your heart right now, I want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be assured that I am in the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's the prayer of your heart, raise your hand and I'm going to pray for you. You can put it down right away. But anyone? Anyone? Right? I'm not going to be long. Right? Is there anyone who wants to receive the Lord Jesus Christ today? Right? The next one is, you had already received the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know you are lacking in your relationship with Him. In your following Him. And you want to really follow the Lord Jesus Christ. But it seems that there's some hindrances in your life, obstacles. But the Lord God is telling you, you are more than a conqueror. Through Him who loved you. If that's the desire of your heart right now, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to love you more than this. Right? If that's the desire of your heart, I want to pray for you. Yes, I see that. Right? So raise your hand and then put it down right away. Right? I see that. I see that. I see that. I said, Lord, I want to follow you no matter what the cost. I'm going to follow you. Come on. Right? If there's a prayer of your heart, I want to actually like invite you. Still, everybody praying. Every those who raise their hand, please stand up. Please stand up. Right? You might not have raised your hand, but you want to really like go and tell Lord God, I'm standing up because I want Lord God to declare that I want to follow you, Lord, before you, before principalities and power, Lord God. And, and if you are already dedicated your life to the Lord Jesus Christ right now, stand with this other believers. Come on. Right, support them. Right, put your hand upon those who are standing beside you. Put your hand on their shoulders. Right. Put their hand on their back. Come on. Oh Lord, you see, Lord God, your people. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for your promise. Lord, of life eternal and life, Lord God, abundant. Life, Lord God, to the fullest. And Lord God, Lord, I pray that we, again, Lord God, we are not going to be fooled again, Lord God, by the world's fool's gold. But rather, Lord God, that we are going to aim because we were bought with a price by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, Lord God, again, I pray, Lord God, for salvation. Lord, again, I pray, Lord God, for dedication. And Lord God, use our lives. Use our lives, Lord God, in order to declare you. Lord, tonight, today again, Lord God, Lord, we want to know you. We want to know you more. Know you deeply. And we want, Lord God, use our lives so that you will be there. Oh, good shepherd, we pray, Lord God, that we will listen and hear your voice and follow you, Lord God, as we lead you. Oh, Lord God, thank you for your promise. 
that you learn, Lord God, that you, you eat, you feed, and you meet our needs. And thank you, Lord God, for giving us under shepherds. Lord God, and I pray that we are going, Lord, to have more under shepherds, Lord God, in light cast, and we will be able, Lord God, to also like, do that and help other churches also to do the same. Again, Lord God, not for like a sake, but for your name's sake. All for your glory. And now, Lord God, we give all the glory to you and you alone. And the people of God say, Amen. Let's worship the Lord God right now. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment and never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't know.
blessings, Lord. Jesus, you don't know me. Get more of our I'm not here for a blessing. Yes. Cause Jesus, you don't know. We give more me of us, Lord. We give more of us for you, our King. More for the kingdom, Lord. That you we just want to do. And not just us, I Father. Just we want, want to bring along you. others with us, Lord your kingdom as many as you want oh God as many as you will lead us oh God for the glory of your name until everyone every knee bow down and everyone confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all amen thank you Lord I don't know about you, but if I've actually just noticed this as well, that this, that the work of the Holy Spirit has been so evident all throughout our worship, our Sunday celebration uh, this morning, right? From our worship and singing, worship and giving, and our worship and word. You know, one thing really stood out to me, and that is that we have an all-sufficient God. That in Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, He is enough, right? And that anything that we, we might need, right, is in him. And you know what he does? He leads us in an abundant life, right? Uh, from uh, nothing else, the saw, let it rain. And then in uh, our verse for our giving, Second Corinthians, that he leads us to abundant life. And even, it even showed up in our main verse, John chapter 10, verse 10, that, he, what, that we might have life and have it. More, abundant, abundant, more abundantly. Can you imagine? I don't know about you, but that's pretty clear to me, right? That's the whole worship service, the entirety of it. And God is showing it to us. That is amazing. And I'll tell you something that's even more wonderful. They didn't talk about this, right? They didn't talk to each other and then tell, you know what? Let's use this verse because, you know, it kind of connects, right? But the Holy Spirit was the one who revealed it to each and every one of our leaders here, to our pastor, to our uh, music director, Atarika, and even to our program director, Kersey, using that uh, exhortation in our giving. And you know, uh, because we have an abundant God, right? Isn't it fitting thing to celebrate that uh, His abundance in our lives, right? And that is why in the next four weeks that we have as our church, Three of those Sundays are actually going to be spent partying, right? <laughs> so we will party because we believe that we serve a God that is abundant, right? So for our announcement, this afternoon, our first party, the first of our parties is our life class party. So if you have leaders, if you have any delegates, yeah, do not forget to invite your delegates to this party again you want we want everybody to live out a life that is abundant and if you withhold this from them right you're, you're withholding God's abundance in their lives right then next week on November 6th not yet <laughs> on November 6th we will have our welcome to the family party now. so please invite all and each and every one who had opened up their house, and even those who are attending uh, our Every Family for Jesus Bible Studies. Do not forget, invite them. Again, this is an invitation to the abundant life that Jesus had promised in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is actually the last party. Uh, next, well, not the last announcement, but this will be, the next announcement is our um, Bilis naman no, na, na. 10 years! It is like a 10 year anniversary! 10 years of God's faithfulness in our church and in the lives of each and everybody here, right? Now, 
Okay, we're winding down a little bit. On the fourth one, we have our prayer done. And this is another way. <laughs> this is another way when we can actually celebrate God's goodness by waking up early. All right? <laughs> and last one, cell groups. Again, this is not the church. This is the church building. Right? But church is when we decide that we will build each other up, edifying each other, lo- each other up into love and good works, doing what God is telling us to do, to partner up with Him for the Great Commission. So thank you, everyone, and thank you for joining us this morning. All right, good morning again. Again, um, our 10th year anniversary, so the, the theme for the month is fantastic. There you go. All right, so um, we're starting next week for that new curriculum. Let's all stand and we're going to close in prayer. Lord, thank you for, again, Lord God, for your word. Thank you, Lord God, that you own us. Thank you, Lord God, that you lead us. Thank you, Lord God, that you had entrusted us, Lord God, to your under shepherds. So we come today again, Lord God, celebrating your presence, Lord God, in each and everyone's lives. And now unto you who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before your presence with exceeding joy. To you, our only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and evermore. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 God bless you.